Check, check, check. But yeah, no, that, that's gonna be a shit series, dog. Yeah, it's going to seven. It's going to seven. Yeah, they got to get their money out of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just, you know, I like legitimately feel bad for Suns fans. Like, I was accepting it this year. Like, okay, they're gonna do it, and then they're just like not gonna shut up about their championship. <laughs> Right, I, I accepted it. My my. I was Yo, bro, it was like well, you know you, you get in trouble and you like in school and. You, bro, it's a different season. What did what did Tone say? Stage too big. Um, Shut the fuck up about the Lakers. <laughs> They're not playing. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Tyree Tuesday 10. King of the desert. Been my head, man. King of Arizona to California. <laughs> yeah. I put a work, you just rap about it. You lame vehicle to change for the lax mileage. Pro black mentality, just a phase. You complain, time to whack, now you're rationalist. Terrified of the boogeyman, childish. Black block to you, Kubians, that's stylish. Cosplay in your car, man. Any fast outfits can't cast rock, got a glass house. Is yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome to AZ Way Too Active HQ. My name is C. Leach, man, and uh, I gotta say, I'm really, really excited about this interview today, man. It's an interview I've been wanting to get for probably the better part of two years. Like, no oh, joke. Man. Um. I've heard a lot of people introduce this guy. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody do an adequate enough job, man. We got Rocky Tyrade here, yes. a.k.a. Mr. Jacob Rayford. <laughs> that chapter of his life, I feel, is really starting to kick off, so I'll, I'm going to introduce him first as Rocky Tyrade. Yes, yes. But we got a lot to talk about with Absolutely. Mr. Jacob Rayford as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. How you Absolutely. doing, man? I'm doing great, man. It's, it's great to be here, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're, we're, we're in an AZ way too active uh, uh this is the Hall of Justice right here, man. Let's go. All, all dope shit. You know, it's, it's, this is great. Let's go. All these other spots are the Legion of Doom. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. But, man, uh, pff, where to start, man? Rocky Tyrade has so much going on. Jacob Rayford has so much going on, man. Who should I talk to first? Oh, man. Yeah, that <laughs> makes me sound very, like, sociopathic, which would be in the line of, like, you rap. <laughs> you rap. I've heard you rap, motherfucker. I hear these tirade Tuesday um, bars. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, anything, man. It, it's, it's all one thing, you know? Like, I had an album called The Dichotomy of Rocky Tirade, and I'm really about duality and about all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, you put them together, it's, it's one whole being, you know? Absolutely. So, Absolutely, yeah. man. I've, uh, man, I've been, you've been getting me close to quitting rapping with this tirade Tuesday series, bro. <laughs> I think it was um, tirade Tuesday 4. I think that was one of the UK beats, right? Uh, oh, yeah. That was... Um, you were in the studio Tion, rapping in the Tion chair? Wayne. That was the Tion Wayne, the, the right. wow. And, you know, I, I think I just... I got into a point where it's like being an MC, being a lyricist, being someone who does like traditional hip-hop, people try to put you in a box. And I love Boom Bat because that's, you know, obviously the era of music that we listen to and music that you emulate as, as an artist finding yourself. And even like as an artist, period, you know, you can make music that fits in that subgenre. But I wanted to show that, you know, we could do other things, that we can you know, jump in these specific lanes and, and still get as busy as other artists, if not busier in some other, in some cases. Um, that's aside from the Tion Wayne thing, because I think Tion Wayne is a dope ass artist. Right. Um, but, um, you know, the whole point of the tirade Tuesdays, one of the points at least, is just to show versatility and to, and, and to, to break that narrative that, that lyricists, quote unquote, um, are only within like the boom bap genre. Like we're, we're everywhere. You know? Yeah, you, you to me have always been a shining example of that, man. And like uh, something that I've always found interesting about you is your connection to the UK. Um, I know you've <clears throat> toured out there. Like I know yeah. you've actually set foot on, on UK soil, which is different than a lot of people can say. Um, me personally, I've always more seen like East Coast artists be tapped in with UK artists. So like what, what got that started for you to where you really started showing real interest over there? Um, I don't know. I just, I was always like in, in tune with music, like, um, you know, on a global level and whatnot. And for some reason, I think like, especially with grime, there was just a certain energy that I felt kindred. You know, my name is Tyrade, Rocky Tyrade. And then there's a certain type of energy, a certain type of grunge, a certain type of like execution and feel and cultural spirit that I felt resonated with me because it, it you know, it was kindred. It was, I, I could relate to it. And with the, the whole UK um, side of things, you know, it just kind of happened naturally. Um, introduced to some people, met some, uh, made some friends, uh, which made transitioning out there um, um, easier. And, 
you know, one of the things that really set me aside is like being an artist that we don't show up with um, a big ensemble of individuals. You know, we're, we're out on the road with just me and a homie and the homies from around their, their ends and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that real people connection type of type of deal. And, um, you know, it just kind of blossomed from there. And, um, yeah, I, I just I consider it no different than going to New York or, or going going to Atlanta or Chicago or, or Seattle. It's it's I've tried to erase the border in my mind. I was talking to somebody about that the other day, man, because uh, I was watching that Praise the Lord video, ASAP Rocky and Skepta. And I yeah. was just like, it just shows like the direct parallels of the U S and the UK and like people forget that like we came from over there. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of connections between well, yeah, the country. And I mean, us. and it was like with, with, with um, the black diaspora, like one of the things that, that, that scares the, um, the government and the, the quote unquote them, the, the man and all that type of stuff is like the linking up of black culture. So they, they try to um, alienate one another. Mm hmm. And um, that was one of the uh, driving forces behind me wanting to, to really link up with other individuals of the diaspora because, you know, and we see it now, but like Afro beats and stuff like that. And, uh, but there wasn't a lot of examples of like people from different, um, you know, subcultures like linking up and having that shared similarity being, you know, individuals from different parts of a, a shared diaspora. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing, man. It really is. It, it really is, man. And uh, me personally, like as an artist, as an MC, like thank you for doing that. You yeah, know what I mean? Because like I, I love a lot of things about UK culture, just like all through there, man. Like I, I really love and respect a lot of the things that they do. And like your beat choice on them, them tirade Tuesdays, man. man I'm just like, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm like, I know he's tapped in because these beats are otherworldly. <laughs> like <laughs> he's going crazy. I want to give a shout out to my man, my man uh, um, K9, my man Henny, uh, my man Young from out in Birmingham, uh, uh, UK. Um, uh, That's not Alabama. <laughs> of course, That's Teddy the United Silencer, Kingdom. <laughs> uh, my man Scoob. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're real, we're real big. This, this isn't just some, some gimmicky thing. Like, we, we have no borders. This is really a, a, a one larger nation type of deal, type of mindset. And so. I, I feel like that, that's kind of why I introduced you as Rocky Tirade first, man. I see a lot of that mindset translate over into what you're doing now in your personal life on the political side. Um, what do you think's most, what's most important that you got going on right now? I know, I mean... What is it, the ACLU Board of Directors? Oh, yeah. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Man, yeah, so all, all, that is, all this protesting activist stuff, like, it's just, I don't even like using the term activist because that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Um, but it, it is, it's all something that just kind of kind of happened. Yep. Like, I've been protesting off and on since uh, 2011 when we were doing Occupy Phoenix out here and doing the whole Occupy movement in general. Mm -hmm. um, and as things, as tragedies would arise, you know, people would be called out into the communities. And um, the more it happened, the more I just found myself in, ingrained in it. And then in 2020, um, the perfect or imperfect series of events, because tragedy is not a, a positive thing, um, led to me and other colleagues, um, you know, leading the majority of the demonstrations in Phoenix throughout 2020. Um, we formed a group called the We Rising Project. All the things that happened throughout history in terms of, like, uh, COINTEL um, assaulting, uh, you know, black-led organizations happened, infiltrators, uh, all, all sorts of just crazy nonsense, um, you know, political prosecutions of a lot of individuals, um, just outright blatant uh, colluding between different bureaus, including the FBI, in order to um, uh, try and deconstruct what we had going on. So all of that happened. And at the end of the day, you know, we're like, okay, so they took away, um, you know, um, systemically or systematically um, our power to protest. So we looked at other initiatives like our no cap initiative where we're looking to create a first responder unit for behavioral health and, and, sub and substance abuse calls and unsheltered communities. And um, that trans translated into, uh, transferred into, um, you know, other um, calls to action where, you know, joining the Tempe Public Safety Advisory Task Force, but with Mayor Corey Woods and uh, joining uh, one of the branches, uh, one of the NAACP branches, uh, political action committees and um, the Maricopa County um, Democratic Party uh, Black Engagement Committee, um, Executive Committee, um, and then, um, 
joining the ACLU Board of Directors, the Arizona ACLU Board of Directors. And it's one of those things where it's, it's crazy because at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm just a rapper. It's how I look at it. I'm just an <laughs> no, artist. No, you're I'm not. Just, just stop. Stop just with all person. that shit. <laughs> you know, I, I drive a domestic car. Like, I'm just a regular-ass dude. You feel me? And, you know, they, they felt that because of my contributions in this small span of time um, that I was somebody who should um, be on that board with, you know, these other individuals that come from, you know, like academia and have been practicing in social justice the majority of their lives. And, you know, you have people that have um, been in that board or within that, that, that orbit for decades. And, you know, these are people who are like, these are, they're career driven when it comes to this. And I'm just some, some guy from around the corner who can. Well, well no, like, <laughs> I, let me stop you right there. Cause you're not, you know what I mean? You're an educated individual. You're, as far as being just a regular dude goes, you are exceptional. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Like, I get, there was a, a strong period of, of pandemic USA where I was getting my news from you. I didn't care what anybody else said. I was like, no, Rocky's outside. Rocky's in the street. Rocky's in the boardrooms. Like, Rocky's really in these places. He knows what's going on. Like, you saw me out at the... The protest I, for I Dion. I appreciate it. I yeah. appreciate it, man. You know? And um, so I'm like, I found you in the crowd. I'm like, Rocky, what are we supposed to be doing yeah. right now? Like, I'm yeah, like, because everybody's that. running around drinking and shit. Like, Oh, it was crazy, man. man. And it, it, it was it was a whole, if we had, I'll come back and we'll do a whole nother, I can write a book on that shit, bro. I bet, I bet man. And I was, uh, uh, I was talking to you a lot at that time. Of, like, I was like, dude, who can, who can be trusted out here? Like, because I see all these, them. these leaders, right? And then all of a sudden when shit goes bad, they disappear. I mean, that, that's what happened. Like, um, people who live in Phoenix, you know um, this specific person, Merritt Maupin. Um, Phoenix people know. We're not mm-hmm. going to give him any credibility. Yep. Um, that was one of the reasons why I started protesting is because he had this, um, this history of, like, getting the youth riled up. And then he would lead them out into, you know, areas of danger where the police were out there. And then he would just disappear, magically disappear. Mm-hmm. And we knew that this was going to happen and that these youth at this time, there hadn't really been any significant protests since 2017. That's three years removed from the time we were at. And, you know, we showed up with water bottles and milk and Band-Aids and et cetera because we knew exactly what was going to happen. That happened. The mm-hmm. next day, there was nobody there that was, like, showing up as a leader. And so we just try to help out. You know, people had their hands up saying, hands up, don't shoot. We're like, hey, that's like some, you're subconsciously victimizing yourself. Put your fist up. You yes. feel uneasy about being around each other. Link arms. Um, you know, have a specific call and response. Like, if there's somebody out there that's like it, trying to infiltrate and be like an aggressor, push them out and whatnot because they're probably working with for the, the cops or just trying to cause calamity so people can, people can get hurt. So that type of stuff, that type of genuine response with my colleagues and myself, like that is what led to, you know, having the privilege of being able to channel that voice through throughout that that season. And, you know, we were talking about getting we were getting people registered to vote. We were talking about pertinent um, uh, election, uh, uh, election races and whatnot. We were talking about your board of supervisors, your uh, Maricopa County um, Attorney's office. Um, we were talking about uh, the county record, uh, the, the recorder. Um, we were talking about how a police person, a policeman, is just an expendable resource, and that you really have to look at not just the police department itself, but the policies that they enforce, the people who write those policies. And as soon as we really started concentrating on that, that's when they cracked down. And um, you know, that's when you were able to see who was really there for the moment and who was there for the movement. Right. Because there's people who showed up for pussy and there's people who showed up for policy. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you showed up for policy, we saw that at the end of the day because you, you were there in and out. There's people there that were trauma bonding and they were just there to have a good time and to, you know, what are we going on to next? We're gonna party, we're gonna kick it. You have white centering folks that would come up on some like, we're just rebelling and countercultural, like, mm. um, like um, that, the it, it, Antifa um, aesthetic because um, we were all anti-fascist, yeah. but the Antifa aesthetic, and people know who I'm talk- what I'm talking about. They know what I'm talking about. Right. Um, people would show up there and center and take away from the energy that black and brown people were, were trying to present to the, to the community, to the, to the universe, really. Um, so that showed over time. 
And, um, you know, it, it's an honor to, to be recognized as somebody who just cares about this community. You know, I'm a transplant at the end of the day. I came here like Vegeta on some California shit. Like, and I'm from the West Coast, and <laughs> I gradually not only acclimated to the environment, but, but like, learned to champion this as my, my first home. So I feel obligated, especially as a transplant, to, like, really put my foot forward and represent this, com this, uh, this community, this county that has embraced me. Absolutely. So it's, it's Absolutely. Been a, a beautiful and that's thing. That's one of the big reasons I feel like your path isn't, I don't know. I mean, do, does any of this stuff feel difficult to you? I mean. Because I feel like you're made does. for it. I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's very stressful. It's a very, like, narcissistic game with a lot of individuals. There's a lot sure. of sociopathic individuals. There's a lot of ulterior motives. Um, but, you know. The certain avenues that we come from, you know, we're around a lot of cutthroats. We're around a lot of shysty people, you know. Right. So uh, I've already already have the um, street education to be able to navigate through a lot of these things. So when somebody comes from outside of the community and they try to like integrate and in, 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 like mm. lead people astray, you smell it's it. like being a youngin yeah. and seeing like this random person try to come in around your clique and try to like shift the narrative. It's like <laughs> we don't really allow that. Yeah. And so applying that knowledge in that avenue is what was able to, I was able to keep my 10 toes down and just be able to apply myself in the best way possible. It's, it's, it's really been a blessing. And had I approached this at a younger age, I don't think I would have been as equipped. So that, that in itself is a statement, right? It's like, uh, something I always try and remind myself of as well as other people is that sometimes opportunity knocks on your door just to find out where you live. It's not necessarily because it has its opportunity for you at that moment. It just wants to make sure it knows where you're at so that when that time comes, it knows whose door to knock on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's yeah. why I'm like, does any of that's this crazy. seem hard That's for crazy, you? man, because I remember we're almost on the, like, especially last year, that was like the decade of, like, uh, since Occupy. And I remember I made this song called um, Occupy Music or something like that. And I, even though I was so genuine and I was going out and I was protesting and stuff and I was, I was in, uh, what is it, car park, whatever the hell in New York. Mm -hmm. And I was out here and I was talking to my man Seven at the time. And I was like, I just feel so, cause I share the same birthday as Malcolm X. And I'm like, I just feel so like fraudulent, you know, <laughs> like, like what, what, have, what, what am I doing? You know? And, and it was just, he gave me this advice at the time and it's like, you know, just keep moving along and living your life and you'll be able to, because, you know, same with, with, with Malcolm, he was a very well thought individual and he was very aware but he just didn't have that ability at that time because he was just his his priorities were elsewhere you got to go through and what you got to go through exactly. to get ready for that and and everything my life um music being an indie musician and the changing of so many different like phases of the music industry every good and terrible event prepared me for everything that happened in 2020 up until now Mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's been crazy I mean I can speak from experience man I saw you out there you know a head, a head or so above the crowd right just doing your best to make sure everybody was doing what they're supposed to do like just really being a general and I feel like I feel like that's just who you are and not just in politics not just in rap just, just who you are you're the kind of person who will just take up that mantle because you're just like fuck it I'll take the slings and arrows for my, my fellow you know what I mean? So I could understand why those people approached you and they're like, no, you're not just some guy. Like, it's deeper than that. You know, I feel like what you're doing, is it's on a higher level because there's just so many different levels to what you're doing. Oh, man, it's, just, it's crazy. It's crazy, I'll tell you that. Um, but you talk about being out in the crowd. That's, that's MCing, man. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, Prem over there, he behind the camera. You know, like, like that's one of the illest performers, bro. Yeah. You know what it's like to look at a crowd and read the crowd and know when the crowd is there and when the crowd is not and see somebody who's not in sync. And it was the same thing like being in a protest. Like, who the hell is that guy over there? <laughs> or, you know, this, these two people over here look scared. You know, let me make sure they're going to get home yeah. safe and whoop de whoop And it's, it's and, and in call and response, it's just like being on stage. Mm -hmm. And um, especially at that time, I wasn't, you know, my priority wasn't in music because I didn't feel that it was... That's not the time. It just wasn't appropriate for me specifically. Man, we could um, also talk about the fact that you took how long off of music and then came back just fucking swinging on everything <laughs> and everyone. Like, what? How did you even pull that off, dog? I was like, oh, is he done with the pop? No, he ain't done with anything. He's doing everything now. Like, 
Um, I think it came from like just having a lot of pent up energy, and there's just a lot of things I, I didn't want to talk about at the time because it was it's just such a the climate was so brittle, and we couldn't afford to have any infighting and stuff like that. And there's a lot of just bullshit that I was just witnessing, and then also like I can't. You were talking about falling on swords, like man, all that the. The character assassinations, the the fraudulent narratives about my organizations, and all this just negative and just just destructive information, where in 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 it's verbal weaponry that you have to kind of fall on because mm. you can't, and those very precarious moments stop and address them because it would only further like the divisive energy that was already out there, the infighting that was already taking place. So after a while, it's like I'm not being a creative and I'm just draining the shit out of my cup mm. and nothing is filling it. Mm. And it was just starting to affect me psychologically, like spiritually. And I was still <clears throat> trying to go into the studio every now and, and again. Shout out to my man, Lucci from The Wave. Shout out The Wave um, Studios. God damn. Yeah. So I was still going in, but it, it was me being an artist it was just pushed so far back on the shelf it was like i was not even doing it at all so it got to a point where it's like i need to get this energy out and when i come back because i already had some crazy stuff happen with music right beforehand mm -hmm. some wild kind of hollywood stuff like put a stick in my spokes mm -hmm. and it was like when i come back i have nothing to lose man i'm just just, just gonna power up i really feel you know? like that's such a good place to be yeah, like when you really, really have some shit coming up in your life, like getting to that point, even though it's really uncomfortable and it can be so painful, um, it's like getting to that point where you're just like, I got nothing to lose. It, it's yeah. like it just allows you to really level up. And I, I started to feel like how I felt when I first got into uh, like the Phoenix scene, and that was when it was there was a lot of I talked about it on BSE. Shout out uh, um, uh, G One and Mac the Pharaoh, yep. um, where. There was a point in time where there was this, and Check and Traps will tell you, there was like this really big Phoenix versus California rivalry kind of mm. going on with the <laughs> MCs. So off the back of that, like when I start coming into this as an MC is like Rocky Tirade and I'm going on the radio, I'm on the Pulse, I'm on uh, um, uh, Ready Set Radio. I'm like, it's, I got I to gotta bar out uh, um, Friday Night uh, Flavors. Uh, I, I have to bar, bar out, man, because it's like my back is against the wall and all these people were like, we're not going to give this Californian a chance. Who the hell do you think he is? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's yeah, it's it's this, this energy that I felt when we were, we were doing that. Speaking of barring the fuck out, man. Rhyme what? and Reason. Rhyme and Reason, Friday Night Flavors. Y'all know, Matt, y'all know it's like being at a family reunion. You can't name too many people <laughs> at the same time because you're going to forget a cousin's name. <laughs> But um, Rhyme and Reason is uh, one of the chief backers of early Rocky Tirade. So shout okay. out Mad Locks uh, specifically. Um, and uh, yeah, Rock Knowledge and Fact and yeah. And I feel like, I know you and I have talked about this privately, but what year was it when you did the Wake Up Show intro? Oh, the intro. I think that was 2015. Crazy. So uh, me going on uh, Sway and, and the Revolution, uh, Sway and Tech, uh, Wake Up Show, the Revolution, uh, that was in 2014, I think January 2014. No, fall, 20, fall 2013, then it premiered in December 2013. Mm. So that was a minute ago. Um, and but, that's such a huge accomplishment in the realm of an, a rapper, an yeah, MC. Like, yeah. Like, I can't, I, I'm going to get there one day, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, man, I can't wait. Bro, and it, I heard that yeah. verse so many times before I knew it was you. <laughs> and, like, that's, like, was my favorite verse on that that's shit. That's crazy. I'm that's just, crazy. Or lose. Yeah, dog, come on. And then yo. you posted it that day, and I was like, you remember I hit you? And I was like, yo, yo, yo that's you? That's crazy. <laughs> yo, it, it doesn't even, uh, do, I, do I need it? Do I need, I need to, yeah. We shining a little bit. It's <laughs> hot shining, as hell, baby. It's Arizona. Am I shining Arizona. too much? Am I shining too AZ much? way too active, baby. It's spot, hot as hell outside. The spot is, you know, too many tough questions. <laughs> you no, see it, um, you see it. But um, thank you. At that point, artists, speaking to artists, specifically creatives, I had already been rapping for years. Sure. I had already had my back against the wall on several different occasions. When I was talking about rapping and coming out as Rocky Tarrate, that had happened like four or five years prior. So 
not like just that's just a testament to just keep doing it, man. Right. Like uh, right before this, I got off of um, a, a like a dope ass record pool with uh, John Blaze. Conway was on there. Yeah. And everything. Yeah, that so, was today, right? Yeah. 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 Shout yeah. out so, to fucking Conway, man. Shout out Griselda. Yeah. Shout out John Blaze. Yes, and, sir. And so, so keep going because you never you don't know what the hell is around the corner, man. Like all this, I didn't feel comfortable doing grime, even though I wanted to do grime for years. I didn't start doing that until very recently um within the past couple years officially within the past like year and a half um just keep going man absolutely absolutely speaking of keeping going didn't you got a new single that just dropped yeah so that's tirade tuesday 10 speaking of which okay um so that was you know basically what you were talking about like i just felt like i had to get something out and then as that energy kept going i just kept you know throwing everything to the wall and it just kept sticking man it was it was it's really great and again i got an opportunity to really flex my creative abilities and, and, and really push things to the limit and step out that hyperbolic time chamber with the new Super Saiyan level, man. So it's, it's been great. You do every time, man. Like me, when I, when I step into the time chamber, it takes me a little bit to really level up. You've been in that motherfucker so many times, you go in there and you're out in like two days. But that's the point. Time is subjective, right? <laughs> so because like you go in there and like a year is like a day, but like, you know, the, your whole like time literally is relative. And that's true. I think that we can look at how we train and how we like assess music in that same time frame, man. If I were to like compare myself to artists, I have Mega Rand in my group, dog. Right. Like that's one of the most humble people. Y'all like there's a lot of people who wouldn't feel comfortable making the type of music that they make if it weren't for Mega Rand. Like I'm gonna give Fact. him his, fl his flowers on my shit right now. Fact. Mega Rand is one of the curators of a very important subgenre in hip hop. Absolutely. Like, there's a lot of people who came before him. But no one had the impact and the ability to cross to to cross blend it like Mega Ran, like Raheem Jarbo. That's a fucking fact. And he's one of the absolute best freestylers off the yes. top, on the spot, live and direct yes. I've ever seen in my life. That dude's a walking giant. If I were to compare myself to people, I would quit because there's one literally in the other on the other seat. <laughs> <laughs> you're like he's one of my in best friends. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, oh, man. man. I don't compare. I, I, you can't compare yourself. It, it's it's. It's not linear. You're going to go over here. You're going to come back. You're going to stop for a year because other things that happen. Like, you just just go at your own pace. Hip-hop, yes. it's not like the 90s where yep. people got laughed out the building for being in their 30s or whatever. Like, like 2 Chainz reinvented himself in his 30s. Man. Griselda got on in their 30s. After prison. Man popped off in his <laughs> 30s. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, time is just... Your journey is your journey, man. Like, you can't compare to any other artist. Absolutely. Any other person. Any, any other human. Any other like, person. Your journey is your nobody journey. Can, nobody can Jacob Brayford better than you. Nobody can Chris Leach better than me. Exactly. It's our own journeys, man. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. It, well, man, Rocky, it's a fucking pleasure having you, bro. I'm glad to be I, here. I've been waiting for this, man. I can't wait to get you on the live right now. Where can everybody find you at? You can find me at Rocky Tyrade, R-O-Q-Y-T-Y-R-A-I-D. All social media platforms. I'm finally figuring out how to use TikTok so you can get my dry ass humor on there too. Um, <laughs> Thank God I need somebody new to follow. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So it uh, Rocky Tirade on all platforms. Tirade Tuesday 10. That's been doing really well. I have an album coming out. I'm going to be talking about that a lot um, as we get into the summer and we used to get the whole rollout thing going on for that. But um, um, the records like Big O, uh, Victor Sweet Fire um, Those are the t That's the type of energy That you can expect In that album And those are considered Unofficial singles From that, from that album man So And I'm if anybody wants to know I've seen him perform live He can rap all that shit In real life Yeah it's, it's, it's great man uh, <laughs> One more bit of advice Before we get out here um, Do cardio While doing your performances Like Cardio with your, with your show set. Justice always told me to do jumping jacks while I rap it. There we go. Yeah. 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 That's what he said. He's like, yeah. that's what I've always done. Yeah. There we go. Just, Justice Samuel telling yep. me. Yeah. There we go, man. Practice cardio with, with your performances. You'll be right. Absolutely. And don't forget to follow him as well at Mr. Jacob Rayford on Twitter. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So all, you know, because we're getting into a, a real important, like, pivotal, like, election season right now with the, with the, um, with the midterms. Mm -hmm. And um, if you need anybody that you feel you can trust, hopefully I could be that individual. Um, you know, I have spent enough time in this field to be able to spot the, the real from the fraudulent 
And if you notice on my social media platforms and things of that nature, I only champion people that I genuinely feel are uh, really about the community. Yep. And their actions have shown through their work. Yep. Um, so follow me for anything related to, um, you know, political, uh, social justice and things of that nature on Mr. Jacob Rayford. That's uh, M-R-J-A-C-O-B-R-A-I-F-O-R-D. And uh, one more plug for the No Cap Coalition, which is uh, for creating a first responder unit in Phoenix that is uh, for behavioral health, substance abuse. So important. Just uh, victimless, nonviolent dispatches. We're in a, we're really pushing hard for this, and we're really trying to get the city to acquiesce to what this, the community has been demanding, uh, not only for the past year and a half, but for basically a generation at this point, because there's really been an unaddressed void in first responder services. So if you're interested in that, again, hit me up on there. And, of course, I always talk about that shit on uh, Rocky Tirade as well. So you can always find, find that there as well. But, yeah, follow me on social media, <laughs> Rocky Tirade, Mr. Jacob Rayford. You heard it, baby. We got Rocky Tirade, man, Jacob Rayford. Absolute legend in way too many arenas to even go into it, man. This yeah, was an interview activated by your boy C. Leach. Yeah. Make sure you follow us everywhere. We out. Plus, tenants of racism, right privilege, the main state for sure. Can't talk about Ukraine without talking about the black folks going through the same thing but worse. They set aside four days, then turn around a band on locally trained sanctions hurt. High inflation, obviously GDP job growth, never do stack face of words. My fault, I'm box positive rappers. Damn. There are times I'm marvelous, mom and had to thought that going to my job caught up in traffic. Commune for a little bread, you thought it was Catholic. Deep water one still, you thought it was stagnant. Police thought they can kill and call it for backup. Jail brothers, narcotics about in the sack, but over a pill, they all but part of the It's troubling, blame the government, race punishment, I they see the public, a rate these colorists, blue no matter who